Hello, I'm Rod Schaub. And I'm Ryan Schaub, and we work with Frontier Extension District. You know, Ryan, last summer we had uh, uh, some issues with fall armyworms, uh, and they were attacking not only our yards, but some of the brome and alfalfa. Uh, when did you start getting calls? Yeah, we started getting our first calls there in early August. August 8th was actually the first time I had a phone call. And at the time, we kind of thought it was weird that we were getting phone calls about lawns um, and nothing else. but makes kind of sense as we think back about that. We all walk across our lawns every day and we're not always out walking across those brome fields. Once we cut those brome fields, we might not come back to that uh, until next year in some cases. Well, you know, we did get a lot of phone calls about brome fields. That probably was our number one uh, call. Um, was there any common uh, themes that were, were, were that, that we could notice, you know? Yeah, it seemed, I mean, the, the most common theme was just late cutting of that broom. And by late, I'm talking like July 10th uh, until maybe even the end of July. And the thing was those broom fields had enough moisture at that time that we got some regrowth, uh, you know, maybe even only three or four inches, but we got some regrowth. And then those fall armyworms moved through and they wanted that most lush grass. So they were really attacking those late cuttings. Um, and even alfalfa that was cut about that same period of time, uh, we're, we're having issues. So what is the, the life cycle of a fall armyworm? Fall armyworms are a tropical species uh, or insect. They overwinter only in the extreme southern tip of Texas and Florida. And every 23 to 25 days, we have a new generation. So those worms, they overwintered down there in southern Texas. They catch on, or they turn into a moth, I should say, first, and then they catch on to those southern breezes, and then we end up with them uh, here in Kansas. Did they always get here this early? I mean, this year it seemed like it was earlier than sometimes. Yeah, it was uh, definitely a little bit earlier this year. Um, we only, you know, we don't always have fall army worms either, but uh, this time I'm sure we had at least three generations. Uh, I know we at least sprayed three different times for them. Well, Ryan, you know, um, when we first started getting these phone calls, we talked to the entomologist, and the entomologist said that uh, the army worms just gonna go, they're gonna eat the leaves as they go along, and they really don't eat into the crown of the plant, so uh, they don't kill the, the plant. So what do you think happened to our brome stands? Why did we lose them? You know, I think it was a combination effect. Those brome fields were, were cut late, um, but we had enough moisture again to get three or four inches of growth. That takes energy out of that root system. And then they turned around and got regrazed by these fall armyworms. And we grazed them all the way back down, maybe into the, to the soil. And then we turned hot and dry. So I just think we had a weekend to plant uh, due to the fact that they got, they got regrazed by these fall armyworms. Well, thank you, Ryan, and I'm Rod Schaub, and this is Ryan, we both work for Frontier Extension District, and uh, we'll see you in a little bit.